What's going on guys? It's Kyle. Welcome to the Stock Goat YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to be covering the SoFi stock. We haven't made a video in about two weeks. I've been personally really busy with work, but I'm going to try to commit to, you know, five or so videos in the next couple of weeks or more heading into our earnings report, which we will be doing a live stream on the earnings. So be sure to follow the channel. It's going to be a crazy live stream on that uh, SoFi earnings. We're talking about the 29th. So we are about 22 days away from earnings, guys. I believe personally, it's going to be a very, very solid report. It's not going to be one of those massive blowouts that you usually always see in Q4, but I still think it's going to be a very, very solid earnings report with a nice profit on the end. We're going to be talking about you know the potential profits we may see on that uh, earnings report in this video. We're also going to be talking about you know some crazy uh, volatility heading up uh, this week. I believe on Wednesday with a CPI report. So guys, right now we're just cruising along. You can see some analysts are coming out giving SoFi some you know decent upgrades, uh, dollar here, some new uh, price targets, ten dollar uh, price targets. So a couple of analysts are coming out. And it just looks like there's not a lot of bearish sentiment left to hold this stock down forever, guys. I mean, this stock has been uh, shorted like you couldn't imagine for the past, you know, two, two and a half years. And short interest just hit a new all-time high, you know, after the convertible note deal that uh, Anthony Noto announced. I also covered the video a couple weeks later, him coming out giving full detail on that convertible note guys and um, you know that was our last YouTube video we did so um, right now there hasn't been a lot of news you know on the SoFi stock you know big big news I believe the big news that we're gonna see is what we're gonna be seeing on Q1 that's that nerd wallet you know announcement you know SoFi checking account SoFi personal loan best in class and then of course the NBA partnership okay you're gonna be seeing you know those potential uh, you know deals and announcements you know on this Q1 earnings and I believe, you know, the guidance should be stellar across the board, guys. Uh, whatever we said we're going to do in Q4 for, you know, net income profitability, I believe SoFi is just setting up to absolutely, you know, blow those estimates out of the water. And there's still uh, some analysts out there under, you know, that estimate of uh, 95 to $105 million. So I think there's just a lot of uh, blue skies, you know, ahead of us. But I just want to apologize, guys. Uh, for not making videos the past couple of weeks, but I also want to apologize, you know, just the past year or so, not understanding, you know, how long uh, this inflation was truly going to be around, okay? I didn't think SoFi, as of looking at their earnings, was going to be classified as such of a sensitive stock to rates. You know, I just didn't think SoFi was going to be in that category. Because we looked at, you know, just the last two, three earnings. I mean, net income improvement and just, you know, Q4, a massive, you know, $48 million profit, 36% year over year growth. And just the market is still not giving SoFi the green light, okay? I think it's just the risk of a worst case scenario. So, yes, SoFi is scaling. They are growing profitability. You know, those things are great. You're seeing it on the earnings, but it's not being justified just because, you know, this high inflation rate so high and the risk, you know, of what could happen. So guys, we do need a rate cut. I know we've been talking about potential rate cuts for a long time, but if we're going to look at this chart on inflation, guys, and I had no idea uh, how sticky this inflation, you know, would be around this 3% level. I had no idea how many months we've been at this level, but you're going to see that in today's video. So guys, I want to apologize, just not comprehending how long this inflation, you know, was going to be around at these levels and so far being classified as a, uh, you know, interest rate sensitive stock. Okay. So that was something I was just not anticipating. But um, if we do get those rate cuts and so far actually gets the green light, I'm mean, guys, I think they're ahead on where the stock should be dramatically. I mean, I think we're going to be rolling in, you know, massive profits potentially by Q4. And, you know, these numbers that we put out, we are going to absolutely uh, destroy them. So a lot of good things are happening. Once again, guys, we will be doing a live stream on the 29th on earnings. So be sure to follow the channel. Smash the like button, drop a comment. Uh, it's going to be a, a crazy, crazy live stream. I'm going to try and do, you know, five or so videos, potentially more uh, heading into that earnings report. But um, I've been really busy with work. Um, this is our, you know, busy season right now down here in Florida. 
just understand I think things are going to be uh, looking very good once we get around that earnings report. So let's get into the video. All right, guys, once again, uh, the data, the news uh, correlation to the stock market, it just won't end. We all know we're getting, you know, three to five big data points, you know, every single month. We just got the jobs report. The market, you know, was excited. Then, you know, pull back 2%, crazy volatility. And then we have one more coming up. Every single month, you're going to get the same thing, the jobs report, the CPI, the PPI. Once again, we got to just be ready for these types of moves. April 10th, I'm dropping this video, you know, Sunday night, just so everyone can watch this video uh, by that date and understand that this is coming. Good news, bad news, bad news is good news, good news is bad news. We will not know, but understand it's 8.30 a.m. on April 10th CPI report. Hey guys, once again, this is what I want to apologize for, okay? Of course, you know, the market was, you know, going to the moon, 2020, 2021. Some stocks did well in, you know, 2022, of course. But you can see when inflation, you know, ran up to that a 9% level, that's pretty much when the stock market, you know, started crashing. Yeah, I've been declining in inflation, uh, you know, for a long time. But guys, this is what I'm talking about right here. Once we got to June 2023, just look. I mean, June was such a long time ago. Just look at the level we're getting stuck at now. 3.2 July. 3.7 August, 3.7 October, 3.2, 3.1, 3.4 December, January, 3.1, February, 3.2. Guys, the Fed is not playing around. I mean, once again, I don't know if these numbers are, uh, you know, manipulated or BS. That I cannot comment on because I just don't know. But I do see we have a problem breaking into this 2% range on inflation. And I think that's where, you know, the risk of SoFi being a high risk inflation correlated to interest rate stock. I think that's what's really hurting the SoFi stock is these high rates. Even though the earnings on the back end are just getting better and better, SoFi is tightening uh, their credit. SoFi is, you know, slowing down on lending from what they've said. I think SoFi is doing everything right. But guys, I mean, we need to break out of this. A uh, 3% range we've been in for what, guys, like seven, eight months? I mean, this is absolutely insane. This is really what's been hurting the SoFi stock when we're seeing you know, them turn you know, an amazing $48 million profit for their first profitable quarter ever. Imagine if we get into a lower inflation environment, get some rate cuts, and you know, sit in that environment for the next you know, two years potentially. I think that's going to be the time for SoFi to just capitalize on market share hold their uh, interest rates high for their uh you know savings account and just you know steal more market share and just continue to you know do what they've been doing so guys i once again did not know sofi was going to be so sensitive uh to these uh interest rates guys i just had no clue if you actually look at the earnings it doesn't look that sensitive to me i think it's just the market is not giving sofi the green light that we all want. And then of course you continue to get these, you know, Fed members different personal opinions every single week in and out. This stuff really moves the market, guys, when you get these people talking. You can see this guy, the Fed raises prospect of zero rate cuts, but Goldman says that would be very surprising. The Fed just gave you announcement on two or three. Uh it was at five a year ago. Just, you know, it's never gonna it's never going to change, guys. This could go to 10 rate cuts. This could go to negative rate cuts. This could go to interest rate hikes. Nobody knows. It's just nonstop fluff. We need to get inflation down, and that's not happened, okay? We've been stuck at 3% for like seven months. Now, heading over to the SoFi stock, you can see the stock still trading in the $7 level. I mean, we've been here uh, so many times before. The stock continues to you know, have these rallies, these sell-offs, you know, bounce back, just... We've been in these levels for two years, guys. I mean, I just did a thing on my Twitter. Stock was at like 780 exactly two years ago. Okay, so $7 levels for two years. But just look at this upcoming quarter, guys. I mean, th these estimates are just waiting to get just smashed. I mean, look at this, guys. 12 analysts, Q1, March coming out. Look at this, guys. One penny, okay? That is what the analysts are looking for. They are looking for one penny, okay? By the end of the year, they want eight. So it looks like, you know, they think Q3 and Q4. But guys, understand this. Just know a penny right now in SoFi's terms uh, due to their outstanding shares. Call it $15 million. So every time you see a penny, just think 15 million, 15 million, 15 million, okay? They want to see a $15 million uh, profit in Q1. Just look at what we did last quarter, okay? I'm not saying 
we're going to do better than this. I just don't see SoFi falling off a cliff like that. 47 million, right around three cents. Okay, so remember, guys, 15, 30, 45. Okay, each penny is worth 15 million bucks. Okay, I do not think SoFi is going to put up 15 million dollar profit in Q1. I've been following the last eight earnings report. I've been pretty darn close on every single one. And even the last quarter, I said SoFi was going to do 34 million, 36 million. People were calling me crazy. Boom. They come out at near 48 million. Okay. What do I actually think SoFi can put up for Q1? Okay. Uh, we'll talk about the exact dollar amount and potentially penny. So you can see here on their Q1 guidance, uh, revenue is a little bit low, 550 to 560. They just put up like 590. Uh, 600 in the last quarter adjusted EBITDA you know was about 180 last quarter so everything is coming down uh, dramatically so it looks like Q1 will be a little bit soft but you know we know SoFi really loves to beat you know their uh, guidance you know dramatically okay we just saw that in Q4 but understand they got a gap profit uh, net income 10 million to 20 million so yes the analysts are right on track uh, with this guidance you know 15 million is right in the middle one cent um, we know that SoFi has beat, you know, their guidance, you know, on like EBITDA and stuff and revenue for the past, you know, 12 quarters straight. So yeah, I don't think, you know, they might not beat uh, Q1, you know, that that's definitely possible, but I think we're going to be a little bit higher than where we're at. Okay. I think they beat this 20 million, uh, potentially coming at uh, 25 to $30 million for Q1. Okay. Something around that range. So at 30 million, we'd be looking at about uh, two cents, okay? So so that would be exactly where we need to be to just beat the overall you know, analyst expectations, two cents, $30 million. So I just think it's gonna be a really good uh, earnings report as far as what the analysts are expecting. Now guys, this is the updated short interest data heading into our earnings report. Uh, this came out, I believe, you know, a week ago, uh, something like that, but we're looking at 209 million shares Outstanding shares is 976 million. We're looking at 23.23% of the float. Previous short volume, 154 million. So this is absolutely insane increase, 36%. I think this could have had to do with the uh, convertible note deal. Uh, this short interest could definitely be changed by now. It could have come down. It could have come up. But am I really worried about this uh, short interest right here? I'm really not just because I think the next couple of earnings are just going to continue to get better. Uh, we have a higher floor than where we were at, you know, a long time ago, $5 level, $6 level. So the stock is still, you know, building a base. And I just believe the shorts don't completely understand the SoFi stock and they are basing it in that category of what I was talking about at the beginning of the video, that interest rate, uh, sensitivity uh, to the inflation and stuff like that. I had no idea SoFi was going to be so sensitive and just the earnings were just not going to you know, matter for so long. But I just think uh, this won't last. You know, the shorts will eventually cover. Uh, they might lose money and, you know, not cover, you know, on the way up and, you know, get squeezed. It's definitely a possibility. But just want you guys to see that. I mean, this doesn't concern me personally at all because I'm actually just looking at the earnings. If you made the end of the video, I want to say I really do appreciate it. I enjoyed doing this video for you. Once again, we're going to be covering the SoFi earnings live. If you find any of this information useful, be sure to smash the like button, drop a comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Have a great day.